Hey y'all, so today I want to talk about some of the newest features for UI Toolkit. This is all in the 6.3 beta. I'll include the documentation below. In the meantime, I can go ahead and pull up a 6.3 beta project. I'm going to go ahead and call this UI Toolkit for custom shaders, which are a new thing for UI Toolkit, as well as post-processing effects. So we're going to walk through all of that together. While I launch this, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot to keep making these videos. All right, so we're inside of our 6.3 beta in the editor. Let's go ahead and at least get a UI document set up. I've done tutorials on this previously, but effectively we're just going into Window, UI Toolkit, UI Builder. And then from here, I can save a few different things out, but the main thing is that I just wanna save out this UXML file. I'm going to call this UI underscore PP for post-processing underscore shader because we're going to show off post-processing and we're also going to show off custom shaders. So from in here, I really don't need to do a whole lot. I will drag in a visual element and within that visual element, perhaps I'll pull in a, an image just to give it something simple that is going to fall into the kind of root style or dot unity image. And I can easily add an image in here to then show how a custom shader is driving a change. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and go into source and let's pull up a default checker. And that can be our image inside of the visual element. I'll go into align and just center that up. We can also come back out into our top level .uxml file, go into canvas background and set this to our main camera. And now from here, I can also match the game view to very quickly see exactly what this is going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and file save. If we go back into scene, there's nothing here. It's all going to be screen space. If we want, we could always go in and change the properties to make it a uh, world space UI element. But for now, let's just go ahead and right click, go into UI toolkit, UI document. And I'm going to have that UI document there and drag in our source asset that we've just created by saving out that UXML. Again, if we wanted to change this, we could go into the panel settings up here and in the inspector change this from screen space to world or do a lot of other things with it. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as is. If I hit play, we should see our checker image right in front of us. So now the UI element is there, great. What I want to do next is show off a shader. So let's go ahead and make a shader. We'll apply it to a material and then assign that material to our image. So I'm going to right click, go to create, go over into shader graph, URP. And then from here I can do a UI shader graph. You can also just do a baseline shader graph and then add in the UI functionality. But if I do it this way and I call this UI shader, you can see that it already has a lot of our inspector pieces set up, so it's already going to a UI material, which is what we care about. So from here, I'm actually going to emulate what I've seen inside of the documentation just to create a very simple example of what I want to see. So I'm gonna take out the inspector just so that we can see this. Right now we have no shader. This is what we would see as the effect. And in with shader, we can see pretty much nothing right now because we're just applying a base color of gray. If I change that to red, you can see how the shader would update accordingly. And we have an alpha of one. So what I'm going to do is come on over here and I wanna do a basic UV distortion. So I'm going to come over and create a UV distortion node. I then want to collapse this and pull the UV out into a default texture and I want that to go into the UV channel. I also want the tint to come out here and be affected by a color, which is gonna be an out four. So from here, I'm going to grab blue, turn the alpha all the way up. If you don't turn that alpha up, you're not gonna see the color downstream. Then I can have this texture go into a render type branch, and we want this to be set to the texture itself. And then from here, we're going to plug in the color to the base color and the alpha to the alpha. So I'm going to come up here and save. And then the last thing that we want to do is come back over here because we're currently just seeing the color overlay. 
and we want to add a noise map to this because right now it is augmenting the UV. It's distorting it, but by a map that is not applied. So if I click this button and come over into a default particle, I think that works for me. And you can now see something is moving across our UV. If I want to change the direction, I could also do this and you can start to see how the UV changes accordingly. Up our strength just a little bit so you can see that easily and you can see over here in the with shader how that's actually being affected. So if I go back into my UI builder, I can actually go back into this image and then I can come down into material. Now it's not going to let you drag this shader directly in. So what I want to do is do create material, call this UI shader mat. And then within this, I want to go up here and I want to assign UI underscore shader. Click that. And now this material has this shader assigned and I can drag this material in. What I may even do because the source is not coming through great is just change it over to something quite different. And now I can save this out. And when I hit play with the shader assigned, we're going to now be able to see that quite easily. So there is our small UV distortion that we wanted to apply. I'm going to come in here and just increase width and height so that we can see it a little bit easier. Let me save this out, hit play, and see what we got. Perfect. So now we can see stop sign being augmented, UV changing and distorting with the blue overlay. So the last thing that we want to look at is the post processing effects. So from that, it's going to be relatively simple and that we can come back into our UI. And within this UI builder, I can now come over into our visual element, collapse all of this up, and we want to find what's called filter. So we now have filter, I can hit plus and I can add in a number of pre-made filters. Here's a blur that I'll just take up to, let's say 10. And then I can file save. We can come back over into our scene, hit play. And now we should see something as an output here. So this is our blurred with the UV distortion asset. Let's look at one or two other post-processing effects and then we'll wrap up this tutorial. So from within here, again, we're going into filter and I can change this over to, let's say invert. We're gonna do a value of one, file save and play. So now we can see that it's been inverted through a post-processing effect. And maybe one more or two more, uh, you can do custom filter effects here, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a sepia and hit play and see what we got. So hopefully that's helpful to see how you can start making UI shaders. You can start using post-processing filters and start making a very cool UI system inside of your game. I also have some documentation that I can pull up showing some of this different stuff. That's just a discussion forum from Unity where you can get in here and poke around and see a lot of what we covered today. I hope y'all are having a great day that you like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one.